Hey, Storytellers of Storytelling Run. I want to talk about this article on Not to Be. They want Narnia without Aslan. So the uh, there's a on Screen Rant, there's an article where they want to, you know, take out the Jesus and Christianity of um, of a Christian fantasy. So this is kind of my point about role playing games. They want to they want to take role playing games and take out fantasy or Christianity. And same with fantasy, they want to take out uh, any sort of Christian um, theology, any kind of or Christian allegory, symbolism, whatever. Um, she doesn't like the ending, the last battle, and how and, and I'll, um, I'll I'll come back to this, but how um, they all die in it. The, the three die and go to heaven, the three, the, the children, but Susan, uh, that, that one, she, she doesn't go. She's, she's becomes obsessed with herself and doesn't go to heaven. And C.S. Lewis wanted that because he wanted it to be a tale, a warning, a warning, you know, that there's a heaven and a hell. And I don't know if she necessarily goes to hell, but, um, like she's still on her or whatever it is. I don't know the story, but the, the, the woke person here wants to get rid of that. She wants to get rid of any sort of, um, mention of the last bat or whatever she wants to change it so that people don't don't get any christian faith out of it, don't get any christian warnings or or allegory about it and that's what they're doing you know with all kinds of things um and it's sad because we christians in the role-playing game culture are kind of accepting that and playing role-playing games the way pagans play role-playing games you know we just do it for the works with a we we get the treasure we get the game repeat and rinse you know we go fight something get the treasure get some experience points and start over again. And that's why I want to bring, bring in, bring back into the role playing game. Well, I guess this never was in the role playing game, but it, it is in the real true fantasy. Real fantasy was, um, and let me go back here. Real fantasy was, a, was the, the, the struggle between Christians and pagans. And back then, man, fantasy was real to everyone. You know, dwarves, elves, giants were real evil spirits, miracles, all that kind of stuff that we sort of, have now turned into fantasy and just pagan fantasy and just DMD and, and all that and has made it just so gentrified or so harmless or so I didn't even say it's not about harm or harmless. It may, it's makes it vanilla like vanilla and there's no umph to it. It's just, you know, I just want to have fun and do something simple. It's very dumbed down is what it is because you're just doing the same thing over and over. You just go fight, get some treasure, go up a level. You know, we try to make the villains really interesting, but what I'm trying to bring into it is that you say, you don't just save the people and get the treasure. You save their souls. You plant, you hang out with them for a little bit. I have to role play them being converted, hopefully being converted and, and, and being affected by you. And, and there's sort of dialogue in that sense. So it's a very heartwarming as well. Um, and in this, you know, it's interesting how he says CS Lewis, he read fairy tales and secret and would have been ashamed if he had been found doing so. Now that he's 50, I, you know, he reads them openly when he became a man. He, okay. When I became a man, I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness, childishness and the desire to be very grown up. So what I love about him and, and he was one of the, well, him and um, even Tolkien really helped uh, Christians um, and P Pilgrim's progress too. They're like some of the biggest selling fantasy books of all time. And yet we Christians are erasing it from role playing games and we should be bringing it into role playing games. And I, and I've had many requests sort of more of a D and D style Christian role playing game, you know, with more fantastical creatures. And I haven't done it yet, but I, it's on my, it's in my mind to do it. And I think I want to do it. Um, but for now I'm just trying to explore, I'm trying to explore um, mission based Christians in a, dark ages setting based on historical stuff, you know, an amalgam sort of light, silly. And then the one where I kind of let it go freer is in the apocalypse and the Christians in space that, but I do it in a creation science way where it's sort of genetic modifications, not, not mythical, whatever, uh, magical, fantastical. Um, but this, I mean, this fantasy book with Christian allegory, um, tons and tons of, uh, you know, cells and affected, the world and a uh, big influence. And I'm just trying to get that back into role-playing games. Um, and the few role-playing games that are out there or that are Christian, which I am not in any way trying to dog, but they're, they're, they're very similar to other role-playing games where they're sort of replicating them. They're making it where you just go and do a mission and accomplish something and get treasures and go up levels. 
but the part about mission work, we actually convert the people, plan a church, get it situated, and then move on from there. And that's adventurous to me too. That's an, you get all all the other stuff that they do in regular role playing games. You know, you can tone down the missionary part of it if you want, the evangelist part, or do that in a very nice sort of role playing way, and um, and then still have all the fighting and you know going out and fighting the dragon, fighting the bandits, finding the treasure. But the, obviously the biggest point of the treasure is giving it to the church. And then that gives you, you know, and that rewards you as well. So that's what For the Lord RPG is about. And we see in culture how they're erasing Christianity from everything, even Christian stuff. And they're even coming into the church and we're, we're letting them. And we've already let them in RPGs. They've already taken over the RPG culture so that there is no Christian representation in the sense of Christians doing actual Christian stuff which is missionary work. That is the, that is the commandment of Jesus to us. And it's not, a, it's the great commission, but think about it. God doesn't need us to convert people or evangelize. He doesn't, he's doing it for us because we need to do something because we want to serve him, but he doesn't need us to he can save whoever he wants. Um, and then, you know, I don't care, you know, any atheist who thinks that they're getting people away from Christianity, they're not, they're just getting people who don't even want Christianity already. So, whatever. Anyway, that's my point about this. We need to bring Christianity back into role-playing culture. That's what my games are trying to do. Um, so please check them out on my website, storytellingron.com. The, 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 the dark ages is free. The first setting full game. Um, and I'm working on, you know, how and I got a $40 a year annual membership thing. I'm trying to figure out what my business model is. I don't really know. Um, but that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so you can get the apocalypse and the Christians in space and a bunch of new assets tokens and I gotta get, I gotta get printables on there. I haven't done that yet, but I, I know I gotta do that. Okay. So that's just a quick video on, um, why I want, why I'm doing this why I'm doing my, for the Lord, for the Lord RPG, the dark ages, apostles of the APOC and Christians in space. All right. Remember in the game of life, roll holy dice.